Today we are speaking with Ms. Ann Hunter and Lieutenant Commander Raquel Gladio about the post 9-11 GI Bill. This segment focuses on transferability. Ms. Hunter, am I eligible to transfer my benefits to a family member? Yes, you are, but first let me talk about the whole purpose of transferability. Transferability was put into the law for the purpose of retention. The benefit itself uh, is for the individual member, but we needed something to encourage individual sailors to stay in the service and then to also give them something that they could pass on to their family. So above all else, transferability is a retention tool. So when you look at uh, whether or not you can transfer your benefits, the first thing you have to look at is if you're actually eligible for post 9-11. Remember the 90 days, 90 days of qualifying active duty time, then you're eligible. The second criteria is you must have at least six years in the armed forces and then you must agree to whatever the established service obligation is. How do I transfer my benefits? First thing you have to do is make sure you have the documentation for your service obligation in your electronic service record and that it has been approved by PERS 811. The next step then is to go to the website, and, and I'll give that website too if you don't mind. Uh, it's https colon backslash backslash www.dmdc.osd.mil backslash Tango Echo Bravo all in caps. That's the website you would go to to fill out your transferability application. Go to that website, fill out your form, and then once you hit submit, then you have completed that application process. How do I know the status of my transferability application? You would go back to that very same website I just gave you, and in the top left-hand corner, underneath your name, there's a status bar. It could say pending, it could say submitted, rejected, or approved. We hope that it would say approved. You can go back and look in about two or three days after you submit it. It does not take very long for the folks to approve that document. So what happens if it's rejected? If it's rejected, then you would need to correct whatever was wrong. If you didn't have the proper service obligation or the form was filled out incorrectly and resubmit it. When you resubmit it, you would have to change some date on the form because the system won't recognize it if there's not some sort of change to it. And why would it be rejected? It would be rejected first because you may not have had your service obligation documented in your electronic service record, and then the second would be you may have filled out the form incorrectly. How much money will my spouse get? It depends on the status of the member whenever that spouse goes to college. And what I mean by that is, is if the member is active duty, then the spouse will get 100% of the tuition and fees paid just like the member does. If the member is a veteran or a drilling reservist, then the spouse would get the capped tuition, the monthly stipend, and the book stipend. The rule of thumb is whatever the sponsor gets, the member gets, that is what the spouse gets. For dual military, how do I transfer benefits to my children when they're not in DEERS as my dependent? All the member has to do, the one that they're not considered uh, uh, dependents, all they have to do is go to PSDs and have the children listed as their dependents with no benefits. The key is no benefits. And once they're done listed that way, then they will show up in the transferability application. Then dual members could have up to 36 months apiece, a total of 72 months that they can transfer to their family members. If I have young children, should I apply for transferability now? Yes, you should definitely make that election now because if something happens to you later down the road, you, your family members will not be able to make that election on your behalf. And you can always change the election. You can modify the number of months and you can retain the benefits. If you choose not to give them to your children or your dependents, you can keep those benefits for yourself. But if you think that you might want to do it, then your best bet is to do it sooner than later. How long do they have to use the benefits if I do transfer the benefits to my young children? Your children have up until the age of 26 to get these benefits, and your spouse has up until 15 years after you separate or retire from active duty, just uh, like you do. How much money will my children receive to go to college? Your children receive the cap tuition amount, the monthly stipend, and the book stipend up until the age of 26. Can my dependents inherit my benefits? Yes, your dependents will inherit your benefits, your spouse or your children, if you've made the election to transfer those benefits while in the armed forces. 
Can I transfer benefits to family members after retiring or leaving the service? No, keep in mind, as Ann mentioned earlier, the benefits are a reward for your service for you to use. However, the transferability of these benefits to your dependents is a tool the Navy's using to retain sailors. It's a retention tool. So you're not able to, do, to transfer those benefits to your dependents after you retire. If I am in the VTU, can I transfer my benefits to my dependents? If you are a member of the Voluntary Training Unit, or the VTU, you are not eligible to make the election to transfer those benefits to your dependents. However, if after a period of time you are moved back into pay as a drilling cell res, then you will again retain the right or the opportunity to transfer those benefits to your dependents. Thank you, Ms. Hunter and Lieutenant Commander Gladio, for answering our questions about the post-9-11 GI Bill transferability. For more information, contact NPC Customer Service Center at 1-866-827-5672 or visit www.gibill.va.gov.